Pope Francis makes his fifth African visit to the DRC in South Sudan this week. The visit, which is part of the Pontiff's Synodal Consultation, comes at a time when the Catholic Church is witnessing its fastest growth on the continent. On the visit, he's expected to have deliberations with the poor, young people and women who've been violated in conflicts. Both Kinshasa and Juba have been ravaged by war in recent times. Africa analyst, advocate Sipo Mantula and African politics analyst Kabasu Babu Katulondi join me in our Johannesburg studios as we unpack this papal visit. Gentlemen, very good evening. Appreciate your time on the show today. Mr. Katulondi, if you'll allow me to, to start with you, uh, the significance of uh, the Pope visiting the, the DRC, particularly at a time when there is a lot of conflict in, in, in the DRC. What does it mean to, to the people of uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo? Well, um, taking into account, considering actually the uh, dramatic uh, military quagmire uh, devastations and horrendous killings of innocent people in Eastern DRC, which is expanding actually up to the Ituri area, uh, it was uh, important for the Pope to arrive, although uh, the visit uh, was originally uh, scheduled uh, for 2020. 2016, mm -hmm. it was important for him to come and comfort the people of, uh, of DRC, pray with them, encourage them to say that uh, irrespective of this era of darkness, the end of the tunnel is there, they must have faith. And that was extremely important because uh, over the years, as the, the DRC has been uh, dealing with this uh, conflict, uh, the, this disaster, uh, they have not received an international uh, prominent personality, and particularly of that spirit, I, supreme uh, spiritual caliber. Mm. Now, Advocate, you, you will take, obviously, uh, millions of uh, Congolese are, are suffering uh, in, in the DRC, and the Pope comes in with a, a message of, of faith, you know, uh, promising uh, light at the, at the end of the tunnel. Um, what's, your, what's your take on that? Hugo, uh, good evening even to your viewers. I think it is important for us to contextualize this uh, papal visit. Mm. Uh, on your intro you said he has been there in 1980, 1985. Uh, why this visit in the 21st century again, uh, when the DRC has been in conflict since 1960? Others, they might date it back, but so to say, mm. in fact, during the time of the Berlin Conference, but the message of hope, my worry is that, as was was saying, to have an international figure, are we saying our African spiritual movements, our African traditional beliefs, cannot respond to the challenges that we are facing? Uh, my worry is the issue of religious colonialism that has faced Africa before. But the issues of conflict has benefited these European countries mm. all along. The DRC, where it finds itself, Hugo, it is in an election mode. The visit might come at the right time to say the message of peace. Yes, you use religion to push the messaging of peace. But he, he, he was using key words, Babu, like economic colonialism, mm. uh, which I was shocked to say, but can he debunk it? Can he unbundle it to say, what is this economic colonialism to the young Congolese to the women of Congo who have been in exile, who have been refugees, uh, who have been planted, I mean, who their resources have been planted by the West. So in some, in some instances, we will say, if he has brought the message of reparation to the Congolese young people, uh, again, he didn't go to Goma, by the way. I was talking to Basu off record. I said, if you come to Congo, go to the war zone as well. Don't end up in Kinshasa. It's the same like tomorrow when you go to Juba. Mm. Where is he going to be placed in Juba, in the southern Sudan? Will he go to Jongeli State? Will he deal with the Dinka issues? So in short, Hugo, I'm saying the visit might have a spiritual significance, a political significance, economic significance, but it must not leave African spirituality on the sideline. Mr. Katalonde, is, is this conversation incomplete without another party to it? Because right now we know that the the Congolese face conflict, but the conflict is, most of it is, is not internal. Some of it is, some of it isn't. You know, the, the M23 rebels who purportedly are funded by, by Rwanda. Is that conversation complete without a conversation, without uh, the M23 rebels or, or Rwanda or some of the other warring parties? Yeah, I think your remark is, uh, is pertinent because 
uh, one of the aspects, uh, one of the dimensions of uh, the Pope's visit uh, per, uh, relates to uh, the um, uh, diplomatic interna international action he's going to take mm -hmm. uh, because that his presence in the Congo allowed him to receive uh, a lot of uh, information, a lot of uh, materials, a lot of elements with regard to the involvement, not only of Rwanda and Uganda, but also of the uh, East African uh, communities' uh, troops, uh, because uh, you, you not only have East African uh, communities' troops, you have South African uh, 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 troops there, you have Tanzanian troops there, who were part of the uh, Force Intervention Brigade, who actually had defeated, helped contributed toward significantly uh, defeating the M23 in 2012, 20, uh, 23. So the Pope is going, he has received a lot of uh, information. Uh, I think he has, he has now a different understanding of, of the problem uh, in its uh, transnational uh, uh, that dimension. And uh, the uh, Congolese, I mean, the Catholic Church uh, ecclesiastic leaders have uh, advocated uh, the action of the Pope internationally uh, to uh, pressurize international uh, leaders so that a more uh, durable and sustainable solution can be uh, um, activated, initiated to end the suffering in Eastern Congo. Albert Mazzilla, let's talk about the Pope's visit to, to Sudan. Mm -hmm. is, is the conversation the same? We obviously know that the one thing that the two countries have, have in common is that they've uh, faced a huge amount of uh, war of the last, uh, last uh, short period. You know, Hugo, I would have wanted to pick up on this issue of information gathering and uh, analysis. What do we do with that information that he has been given? Will he still go to pray for it, or will he share it with the international community? No, uh, the Pope is, uh, is, uh, is also a head of state of the Vatican. I know. Mm. So he has got his own important uh, diplomatic machinery and his network of uh, you know, ecclesiastic leaders all over the world, even in Rwanda and Uganda. So you can utilize those to pressurize Mr. Kadame, to pressurize Mr. Museveni, yeah. and so on and so forth. No, I hear you. But going back to your question of the South Sudan, I saw two things about Congo. They've got two longest rivers. It's the Congo Basin, is the Nile River. They've got the longest civil war. It's a foreign military intervention and multi-national uh, that have been there. But I think when you look Spirituality and religion, they have been, they have managed to get through the Catholic and the Vatican to convert Africans to, to become Catholics. Mm. So even in Sudan, we have a high number of Catholics who have an expectation. The South Sudan Juba has been struggling on issues of uh, the oil. They've been struggling with the electoral calendar. Uh, both Rick Macha and Salva Kiir have been shuttling Addis Ababa in terms of the peace talks. So if you look, the, the message that you might bring in the South Sudan will be the one of dealing with the challenges that have faced that newly born country of 2011 mm. to say this will be the first visit. He has visited Sudan when it was not Sudan Khartoum. Mm -hmm. But Juba it is a new ball game where also African Bantu spirituality is right also there. So I think it's a matter of putting the pressure also on the election in the South Sudan. But I still insist, Hugo, you still need an African intervention also. But the visit of him in the South Sudan is timely also. Well, Mr. Katalunda, let's talk about African expectations. So the Pope has come with a, with a message. Um, what is Africa expecting from, from the Pope? Obviously, we, we've only heard one part of the conversation, right, which was almost monologue. But I'd like to think that he would have had some closed-door meetings with uh, some leaders in the, in the DRC. What is the message that they would have sent to the Pope? Oh, uh, because uh, the, the, the political landscape in Congo is polarized. You have mm -hmm. got the majority with their uh, broad coalition, New Sacre de la Nation. You've got also uh, the opposition, which is highly segmented, plural. Uh, and so, uh, and then you've got the, the, the uh, ecclesiastic leaders, uh, uh, Cardinal Ambongo, uh, Monseigneur Abbe Chole, and, and others. Uh, and, and here I have to underline the fact that the Catholic Church uh, position and activities, operationality in, the, in, the, in society and in the political uh, landscape has um, a changed tremendously from how it used to operate under colonization as a partner of the so-called triangular uh, coalition of the administration and the, the, uh, the military in colonizing the, the Congo. In the post-colonial Congo, the Catholic Church has changed to become really uh, the defender of the people from all 
the, 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 the cardinals like Malula, uh, uh, even uh, Ambongo right now. So their message, it, it, it really uh, uh, was clear that the uh, Catholic uh, ecclesiastical leaders, uh, when they spoke to the, 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 the Pope, the message they conveyed to the Pope pertained to the erosion of democracy, uh, tribalism, corruption, the collapse of, of the, 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 the law uh, uh, system. That was the message of uh, the, 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 the Catholic Church. But the majority in power, Mr. Shikedi and his uh, associates, emphasized the fact that the Congo is invaded by Rwanda, which is supported by international or uh, what do you call it, imperialistic uh, powers. Mm. And uh, that's why you, you, you heard the Pope emphasize, lambasted, uh, international uh, multinationals that are uh, 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 engaging in product, predatory activities in Africa. He actually clearly said that they should take their hands off uh, the Congo and, and, and Africa. So that's the, the, the government. But the government deemed, uh, deemed it advisable not to speak about uh, the lack of democracy, human rights abuse, and so on. But the, the opposition, because apparently President Kabila, the former president, was not there, apparently was uh, not invited, was not sent an invitation, by the current regime, which was actually, which had actually organized the whole event. So he wasn't sent an invitation. However, uh, the Pope met him, so I'm sure he conveyed the message of democracy, the erosion of uh, parliamentary uh, democracy, and the uh, uh, parliamentary coup d'etat that occurred when Mr. Tshisekedi chose to bribe members of parliament to change the majority that stemmed out of elections and to impose in his own majority. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time on uh, Africa Today. Africa analyst, advocate Sibor Mantula, and African politics analyst, Kabasu Babu Kantaloni, joining me in our Johannesburg studios. Appreciate your time.